Okay, uh, we will discuss some properties of electric feed lines or feed lines. First property is electric feed lines can be straight or it can be curved. For a single source charge, the feed lines are straight. While for a system of charges comprising of two or more charges, the feed lines are curved. And in case feed lines are curved, then the field at a point is given by drawing a tangent at that particular point. So first property is the field line, it can be either straight or it can be curved. In case electric field line is given by a curved line, then the direction of the electric field at a point would be given by drawing a tangent at that particular point. Second property, uh, the electric field line, it originates or emanate from the positive charge and terminate at the negative charge. It emanates or originates or starts from the positive charge and terminates at the negative charge. I'll give you an example. Suppose we need to plot the field line for Q greater than zero. It means that we are talking about positive charge. So the field line will be somewhat like this. Electric field is spherically symmetrical. That is, it influences same in every direction. So it emanates from the positive charge. So arrows should be directed outwards. And it is spherically symmetrical. In every direction, its influence is same for a single isolated charge. And it obeys inverse square. We will discuss that. So as a result, as the distance of the observation point from the source charge increases, the strength of the electric field will keep on decreasing. So that is the reason why the length of the arrows over here is somewhat smaller as compared to the length of the arrows which are uh, closer to the source charge. Again, still further, the length of the arrows will still get smaller and smaller. So these represent the field lines for a positive source charge. And one more thing, the field lines while emanating from the charge body, it always makes an angle of 90 degree. So, from this diagram, two properties can be ensured. Field lines emanate from the positive charge. In this case, since it is an isolated single charge, so field lines are straight, right? It obeys inverse square law as the observation point keeps, the distance of the observation point keeps on increasing from the source charge. The strength of the electric field will keep on decreasing. And the electric field lines when emanating or terminating on a charge body, it always makes an angle of 90 degree to the charge body. Another diagram. Suppose we need to plot the field lines of Q less than zero. It means that we are talking about negative source charge. Here also the diagram would be identical, except that the uh, direction of the arrows will get changed or it will rather get reversed. So this is how the field lines can be plotted for a negative source charge. The field lines will terminate. The field lines will terminate and it will enter the charge body at right angle. So make sure to draw appropriate field lines. It should be spherically symmetrical. Right? It should be spherically symmetrical. And in case the observation point is further away, then the strength of the electric field will keep on decreasing. So this is how the field lines can be plotted for a negative source charge. Right? So these are some very important properties. Another problem. Field lines can never intersect each other. We know at a given point the direction of the electric field is unique. Now in case the field lines are intersecting like this. There is the first field line and there is the second field line. Now this is the point of intersection. So if you consider the first field line then the direction of the electric field by drawing the engine will be given by this. And if you consider the second field line at the same point the direction of the electric field will be given by this. So what we are doing is in case the field lines intersect then at the point of intersection, we are getting two different directions of the electric field which is obviously not feasible because the direction of the electric field at a given point must be unique. It can't have more than one direction, isn't it? So electric field lines can never intersect each other. Another very, very uh, common property 
I mean, uh, the strength of the electric field in a given region can be gauged by the fact whether in that region the field lines are grounded or there are a lot of separation between those field lines. Obviously, in a region where the field lines are grounded, the strength of the electric field will be that much more. So basically, the property of the field lines concerning to this particular point is the relative closeness of the field lines. It gives an idea regarding the strength of the electric field in that particular region, right? Suppose we need to draw field lines for a system comprising of two charges, where Q1, Q2 is greater than zero. Suppose Q1, Q2 is greater than zero. We need to plot the field lines for the system. So, we have discussed earlier also that it is possible only when either both are positive or both are negative. So let's consider the first scenario. These are the two charges and both are positive. Now, here the field lines will be somewhat like this. They seem to repel each other, obviously. So, the field lines will get curved like this. It should be symmetrical. In case both the charges are of comparable magnitude, then this is the diagram. In case it is given Q1 is greater than Q2, then what we do is we need to ensure that for Q1 you need to draw more field lines representing greater magnitude of the source charge. So in such a scenario it should be like this. So for a system of charges, the field lines can be curved, right? So this is it. So very important property. The field lines tend to exert a lateral pressure upon each other. The diagram represents somewhat that these two charges are exerting lateral pressure upon each other. So the point to be noted is that the field lines exert lateral pressure upon each other. It is suggestive of the fact that there exists electric force or repulsion between two like charges. So that is another important property. Let's plot graph for Q1, Q2 less than 0. This is feasible only when these two charges are unlike charges. One is positive, the other one should be negative. Again, this is positive, this is negative. Obviously, they will tend to attract each other. Field lines will be somewhat like this. It emanates from the positive charge, terminates as negative charge. Make sure that the field lines emanate or terminate always on the surface of the charge body at right angle. This is it. It will emanate from the positive charge and it will terminate as a negative charge. And in case both the charges are of comparable magnitude, then it should be symmetrical. I mean, number of field lines should be same. And in short, to indicate the arrows, it will indicate the direction of the field line. Right? So, this is the diagram which is valid when Q1, Q2, the magnitude are comparable. In case Q2 is given to be greater than Q1, then suppose this is Q1 and this is Q2, then here more number of field lines are to be represented like this. More number of field lines are to be represented. So this is the diagram for the field lines of a system where Q1, Q2 is less than 0, where Q2 is greater than Q1 in magnitude. So this is how we need to plot. So you can easily refer in case of a system comprising of two or more charges, the field lines may be curved. And in case it is curved, then the direction is curved. It's direction like this. So at a point, it will be given by drawing a same unit distance to the point. So this will be the direction of the electric field. So in case the field line is curved, then the direction of the electric field at a point is given by drawing a tangent at that particular point. Right? So what do you conclude from this particular diagram? They are contracting longitudinally or lengthwise. So electric field lines contract longitudinally or lengthwise. This is suggestive of the fact that there exists an electric force of attraction between two <coughs> unlike charges. So this is again a very very important property. There are some various other properties as well. Like uh, electric field lines it cannot pass through a conductor. Inside a conductor, the net electric field is zero, so there won't be any electric field lines. This also we will deal in the later section. 
So while it can pass through other substances like dielectrics, what are dielectrics? That also we'll be discussing in the later section. So these are some important important properties.